Puka Nakua outselling Jerry Rice, Colorado getting 21 points on the road, and Jets Patriots is this week. We're going to talk all about those things today on Card Talk. All right, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to Card Talk. I'm Ryan, joined as always by Tyler and Lou. Big episode today as we talk about the week that was in the NFL. The Jets lost, Patriots lost. We've got a lot to talk to uh, talk about there. Puka Nakua is on fire, has 25 receptions in the first uh, two weeks. We'll get into that. Uh, two super fractors of the same player were pulled in Bowman Chrome. We'll talk about that. Christian Pulisic, the LeBron James of soccer. We've got a little uh, little story there. We'll get into that. Lou might bring up Justin Midbert. We'll see. Mm. Possible. And eh, Lou doesn't seem excited, but we'll uh, we'll see. Episode is long, so we'll start with the usual. We'll start with what's on your mind. Ty looks focus i know if you're not listening you can't see but ty's got this look on his face like he's he's locked in he's ready to go so we'll start with ty got up got three miles in got a little 15 minutes on the mat wow meditation wow um a little self-care yeah a little just a little internal work um Mm -hmm. what's on my mind saquon unfortunately just can't stay healthy he's just going to be one of those guys I mean, I know Chubb's leg exploded last night, but Saquon, it's every year, and I feel for him. because it's I feel be, about J.K. Dobbins. It's going to be tough for uh, – yeah. I do too feel that way about J.K. Dobbins, but I think Saquon's just like a little bit more – Yeah, sure. hundred. I'm not arguing with um, Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I do feel bad for Chubb. Yeah. Um, it's Penn State whiteout week. Iowa at home, land 14 and a half. I was thinking, I'm like, why do we do the whiteout – in this game, the TV scheduling makes things so weird now. And with Fox, I think Fox is really trying to pound like the big noon thing because we got Michigan at home, and typically that be the the whiteout in yesteryears. But, but Ty, now- like, how does that work though? Because doesn't CBS have Big Ten games this year? Because like Ohio State's been on CBS like three times. I am not positive. I'm not positive. That's what I like. like I wonder because like. I, Ohio State plays Notre Dame this weekend. I would assume just uh, is that a, is that an NBC game because that's where Notre Dame always goes. Is that a Big Ten game? Is that ESPN's yeah, prime? Like who gets that game? I think NBC gets that game. It could we'll be see. wrong. I think Fox gets the Big Ten matchups, and they like to stuff that noon slot. I think yep, sure. And so they might the Michigan the game they might want to put there. But then I'm also like, ooh, is it kind of for marketing because? It was an easier game, and you want to have a good record for the whiteout because they kind of do something now every week. So you win the whiteout against Iowa, you're four and zero, and then you can kind of like double white it out against Michigan if that game's late, maybe. And but if it's a noon, and then you don't do it for Iowa, you're in a weird spot. So those are all the things that are on my mind. Drew Aller road conference win that was nice. Um, I made an eagle this weekend, pure eagle, very pure eagle. Hit a bomb Were you like drive. eighty yard, eighty yards out, or just on the green early? Uh, I was on the green in two from two twenty five. Hit a four hybrid to like ten feet, jarred the putt. Felt good. What a guy! Electric. Um, wow. It was electric. And watch the Jets on uh, Sunday. We don't win that game with Aaron Rodgers. We're one and one with Aaron Rodgers. I know it'll start to matter soon, but when you have the oldest left tackle in the uh, <laughs> in the league, I mean, it could have been dangerous. Rodgers probably was missing games no matter what based on what I've seen through the first two games. And Michael Parsons is easily the most impactful uh, professional football player I've seen play in a long time. Um, and then lastly, I just popped open a starter deck of Lorcana here in front of me. Boom. I ordered three from Best Buy on pre-order mad long ago. They finally showed up. So in the starter deck, there's like six different types of like energies. You can only pair two when you play. In the deck, there's two foils. Let's see what we got. Uh, is that? No. Aladdin. We thought about we thought about doing a little ASMR card talk this morning. Oh yeah, here's two of them, Aladdin. Yep, these are the two, Aladdin and Cruella. Those actually look pretty fire. Yeah, I got the the the, the um, promo Cruella, but then I wanted to pop this pack open. Then we'll get moving. There keep it is. It moving. There's Boom. the ASMR. Comes with one booster. I'll try and keep it out there. Elsa fresh. Let's see what we got. I believe you get one foil in here, and then they have like the different like legendary. Kind of like whatever it might be. Let's just go through these. Genie. Bang. Develop your brain. That's a good card in the game. Scar. Ty, you've been playing Scar much? Artwork. I have been. I'm pixel born, like the online simulator. Healing Glow. Dr. Fasuna. Pixel born. Yeah, it's like 
not owned by them, but some Mickey. developed. That's kind of a fire card. Starkey. I'm not sure who that is. Tigger. Oh, that was kind of fire too. Hades. A uh, whole new world, and this coconut basket is the foil I just got. Not mm. sure how I feel about yeah, the coconut pass, basket. Dude. Pass, pass on yeah. coconut basket foil. Heavy pass on that. Yeah. So that was that. Thanks for watching my Lorcana rip. Kind of a little bit. Uh, tough scene. Is Pixelborn like a <clears throat> like an emulator? Yeah, a bit. It like you're playing against other humans. Wow. So imagine the gathering. They have this thing that they own and operate called Magic the Gathering Arena, where you can buy things. Blah blah blah. This is just someone coded something. You develop, you download your decks, upload them, and you can play. Gotcha. And it's a pretty fun game. If you know Hearthstone, I never played, but a lot of people played Hearthstone online for a while. iPad game, etc. Um, there's some vibes there, but I'm just trying to figure out this whole trading card game uh, terminology and all that. Things get daunting when you know you got to commit time to be somewhat decent at things, and you don't really have much. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I did see that there's a uh, Winnie the Pooh card that kind of looks like Winnie the Pooh is like a like an evil bad guy character, mm -hmm. and I don't know what that card calls. Sitting on but like I think, the huge pot of honey. Yeah, he's like sitting on a floating pot of honey, and it's yeah. sick. Fire, fire. I Some think of the artwork is really real. strong. Yeah, and the characters they got juice. They're definitely. Yeah, matter. We've been really been pounding it on this show, but I know I have because I of, genuinely uh, really am enjoying it. There's a lot of stuff. Anyway. Lou, what's on your mind? Um, two two things. The first one is I don't know if we're going to talk quarterbacks on the show. I'd love to talk like where you're thinking about the top five NFL QBs. You got Midbird doing Midbird things. You got. Tua, who's kind of going back and forth. You got Burr, who's hurt again. So I would love to talk about that if you guys are open to it. Yeah, I would definitely love to talk about, uh, you know, the slander we gave Josh Allen a week one just for him to come out and put on a performance in week two. So congrats on doing really well. Raiders the Raiders coming across the country. <laughs> Sick. Um, <laughs> um, and the other one is I have my I have the new iPhone arriving Friday, and it's the first time I bought a new iPhone in a really long time. And it's making me think about all the old iPhones. I know like the iPhone one sells for like a good trillion dollars every year. So that's a cool thing. I wish I would have bought one of those and just kept it. I look just makes me it. think about like iPods, iPod touches, um, iPod first shuffle. pair of AirPods, all those type of things. That's where kind of my head. I went. was in a foot locker when the iPod uh, touch got announced. I remember it clear as day. Okay. Because if you, iPhone was locked with T-Mobile for the first three years. In the beginning. I thought yep. AT&T. Was right. it really? AT it was AT&T. Yeah, and AT&T didn't have the cloud it does now. It was kind of this like off-brand. Like, I mean, that was the beginning of the whole thing. Have, yeah. And so you were on Verizon and like you had to have some coin coin to like break your contract, go to AT&T and get the iPhone, which people were doing. Like a good jillion dollars. Yeah. yeah. But I remember I was a huge Apple person. Couldn't get the iPhone for those initial years. My first iPhone, I got my sophomore year after Christmas, 2015, which is crazy to think. You're like in the womb with an iPad now. I got mine around then as well. Like that, that year. What is that? That's like 2014. 14. It yeah, that's early 2015. Uh, no, sorry. No, 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 no. I graduated college 2013. I went there in 09. So then it's 2011? Yeah, it was January 11. Maybe that is a little bit earlier than I got. 15 mine seems yeah. really late. Yeah, late. January 11 is when I got my first iPhone. But I remember Bro. where I was when the iPod Touch came out because I remember it was like, ooh, iP iPhone a Jace, but you didn't have to have the thing. I remember when it was like, oh, wait, so I can like get the apps and play the games, but I don't have to have a phone. That's kind of lit. Yeah, it's That's crazy to think about though. What else is on your mind? Um, that's it. I mean, I'm just, you know, I am settled in off the Jets. It's going to be what it's going to be. We're going to grind it out, and we're going to just do the best we can, and maybe we'll make the playoffs. Maybe we won't. So I'm just going to enjoy football for what it is the rest of the year. That's kind of where my head's at right now. Can I jump back in on something that's on my mind? At <laughs> National, I submitted two PSA things. I got grades back. It was two different because one was an auto, and I think he had some autos separately. Maybe that was why. But – I su uh, subbed a Topps Chrome Pete Sampras auto mm -hmm. that's still in research and ID. And while I had six, a batch of six that's now done with grades, could be rare. should I reach out to them? Or is that somewhat normal? Or It was in the same order? No, separate order, same that's time, right. input at the same time. 
Or is that just maybe they just have never heard of Pete Sampras? Or? No, that stuff happens. If it's different orders, then they could have just gotten mixed up and jumbled. Got it. I feel like that happens. All right. Maybe some someone's gonna be like, "That doesn't happen, you idiot." But I mean, I feel like that happens. <laughs> All right. Definitely yeah. gonna get that in the comments. It doesn't happen. One hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what's, Ryan, what's on my, your mind? Uh, big game this weekend. Uh, cool. Bit. Yeah, two of them, right? I care way way more about one than the other. Ohio State travels to South Bend. Uh, I think it's only like the second time since like 1936. Ohio State's played in South Bend. Um, no two big. Are you going? No. No. To Notre Dame, you're not going. No. no. I thought you'd be going for sure. It's pretty electric as a fan. Just like playing at Notre Dame is pretty historic. Pretty yeah, cool. sure. You got to yeah, be saying, like, about that. You're talking about two top five top 10 all-time college football programs i mean yep. been playing football 130 years like this is this is a big deal this is a big game so um yeah excited for this weekend in college football in general there's seven ranked matchups uh colorado Much better goes, weekend ahead colorado goes to oregon um mississippi goes to bama um you've got iowa at penn state uh you've got washington state plays someone maybe utah um, yeah, seven, seven ranked games, Clemson and, uh, Florida state. I'm really looking forward to that. Obviously you guys know big, uh, big kid, kid club, Nick guy, uh, hoping they can get it done. But Jordan Travis and Florida state look good. I think was that kid's name? Keon Coleman. I think the wide receiver They're they're good. Um, so could be a rough start for Clemson as much as I want kid club, Nick to be good. I definitely would love Clemson to stink. Um, so yeah, good weekend of college football. Obviously excited for Ohio State. Lions three and a half at the moment, Ohio State. Um, uh, I'm going 31-24 on the road. Bucks get it done. I told you guys earlier, gonna it's going to matter. Uh, Notre Dame has two All-American caliber offensive tackles. Ohio State's got five stars everywhere, but especially on D end. And, uh, you know, haven't had a ton of sacks, haven't been able to really get to the quarterback. And you've got to go against two All-American type offensive tackles. Sam Hartman loves sit in the pocket can Ohio State get after him and force him to throw the ball because I'm not worried about like their wide receivers as much like they're that's not their where their skill and talent is but they've got when you can have all day to throw the ball like you can you can make a lot happen so especially with like a six-year guy like Hartman so yeah focused on that for sure that's you know kind of how my week is just Ohio State matters all the way up here and everything else is just you know down there for sports so Ryan how far are you from campus uh, the shop, like 20 minutes, not even. This week has to be electric on campus. It, I know it is at Penn State. Fall vibes, a little chill in the air, a little crunch under the feet as you're, you know, slugging it over to class. Football yeah, it was, uh, is in the air. I mean, it, it, for college football, this is the week where it all really starts to begin. Yeah, I've gone to the last uh, last two home games. Um, obviously, got to most. And it was, it was good vibes this weekend, for sure. I mean, Ohio State finally... Really got it clicked. It's 42 10 and a half. They scored on six of seven possessions. Um, you know, defense looked good. I mean, I, I, I know this doesn't necessarily matter, but these are the things I think about when I'm just as lo- a lot, you know, locked in on Ohio State. Western Kentucky put up 41 points They're on not a schlub. I was about to say they put up 41 points on USF, who Bama put up 17 on. Like, again, there's different situations. There was it was pouring in South Florida for Bama. Like, there's a lot of situations there. Um, Bama trying to figure out their, their QB thing, but yeah, I mean, this this isn't a bad team. That I mean, the Reed kid is is good. Um, they've got a uh, another skill position that's going to be a NFL guy. Like, there, there's talent there. Obviously, Ohio State is far superior, but um, Helton's their coach, right? Western Kentucky. I watched pretty much the entire Ohio State game. Is right? that that's not who it is, is it? Helton's brother, not Helton. I thought it was. Ortiz. I have no idea. I don't. Look it up right now. Yeah. yeah, I think he's saying it's his brother. The outfielder, or no, first baseman, Clay Helton's brother, right? Oh. Tyson Helton, yes, yeah, correct. Clay, Clay Helton, Helton's former, brother, former what USC coach? Yes. So yeah, excited for big weekend of college football. Oh, I say it on the road. Big again. I've talked about it before. Ohio State's got some big games this year. Three of them are on the road. Uh, Penn Penn State's the lone home game. Um, Great for right us. before Halloween weekend. Yeah, Halloween weekend. Uh, we've got you know at Notre Dame, at Wisconsin, at Michigan, and then home against Penn State. So, yeah, we'll see. We'll learn a lot about Kyle McCord and this Ohio State team. Right? There's a lot of talent, but you go on the road to Notre Dame and you can win on the road against a top ten caliber team. That says a lot about your program. So. We'll, uh, we'll find out very, very early this season what Ohio State is made of, and 
I'm looking forward to it. I'm ready for a real test. So there's a lot of, uh, even during that Ohio State game, there's a lot of legitimate, exciting quarterbacks in college right now. Tons. We've now been through a cycle of a couple of years with obviously Bowman U, NIL. You see a lot of juice with that in, in the shop still. And yeah. like, how is it bleeding at all into, you know, for a while it was only like, so, rookie NFL quarterbacks yeah. is that going down the line a little bit at all like are you seeing that or are they still oh. very separated and you just have college collectors collecting some college stuff? it's definitely definitely gained a ton of attention I don't think we've talked about this enough uh have either of you guys seen the checklist for who was in 2023 uh Bowman Chrome University football personally, I've seen a I've couple of the names it. have you Ty I've not looked at it personally all right yet. so these these guys I for sure have autographs ready Shadur mm-hmm. Sanders Travis Hunter, Marvin Harrison Jr. Those and are Drake three. May and Caleb Williams, I believe. I'm, I was getting there. Those, those alone are three big names that don't have any licensed trading cards at this point that are packed fresh. They have cards, but not nothing packed fresh. On top of those guys, like Lou said, Drake May is finally in here. He wasn't in here last year. Caleb Williams is back in here. Riley Leonard, the quarterback from Duke that beat Clemson week one, who looks pretty good. He's in there. Uh, Adonai Mitchell. Carson Beck, Caleb Downs, five-star safety. Should have went to Ohio State, but is at Bama. Uh, Kyle McCord, Ohio State's QB. Uh, Braylon Trice, Emeka Obuka, Keon Coleman for Florida State. Dante Moore, uh, Jatavion Sanders. Drake. But then there's guys who had cards last year, like Aller and um, yep. the other quarter. The What's the name of the uh, – Jordan Club Travis, Jordan Club Travis. Nick, all those Cor- guys. This is Blake, a Blake, Blake Corum is in it. McCarthy is back in it. I mean, you're talking – it's great. Yeah, Michael Penix, who is signed with Panini now. So this might end up being one of his few licensed autographs. We'll see that there's a lot of unknown there. Penix is good. I think he's second in the Heisman. Like, again, I've seen some of the quote-unquote polls about where Heisman rankings are. So obviously only week two or three. But, um, yeah, Michael Penix is in it. So a lot of uh, lot of excitement around there. Again, Marvin Harrison Jr. is the biggest name in Columbus. He's a top 10 name in college football. Um, so for him to have cards and autographs, like – that's that's a big deal. So, yeah, I mean, I, I I've told you guys before it, it was it's 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 public, so it's not a secret. But uh, the Drew Aller Bowman Chrome Super Fractor I got from I pulled from the national packs, uh, graded a BGS nine five ten. That's sold for I sold that for forty five hundred dollars. That's a that's crazy. That's a big sale for uh you know a big time five star quarterback. Like uh that's a that's a big sale. So. Uh, yeah, feel pretty good about the the college stuff. Obviously, I enjoy it, right? As a college football collector, you guys know how much uh, I I love collecting mm-hmm. it. I mean, right here, look from the national. Here you go. Mm-hmm. For those that aren't watching, Julian Fleming, one on one national Bowman Chrome Super Factor, just picked this right. up. Yeah, I just so funny. I was literally about to dunk on you uh, about Drew Aller being from Medina, Ohio, and then you flashed the Justin Fleming card in front of my face. Julian who, Fleming, Julian Fleming, who was committed to. Uh, Penn yeah, State at one point. Number one receiver in America who was uh, 15 minutes from Penn State's campus. Yeah, and was committed. Fields was as well. Yeah, but that's when Fields was a three-star, right? Yeah, he was our boy. Well, we want to talk about QBs. We want to talk about Justin Fields, former three-star, playing like a three-star at the moment. You would uh, you would be amazed. You probably wouldn't be. On how many tweets I got tagged in this weekend that Ohio State quarterbacks are 0-6 in the NFL to start the season. Uh, Justin Fields and C.J. Stroud being the most notable. Uh, nobody loves to give me Joe, Joe Burrow credit, but he is 0-2. Um, so, a few rough weeks here. Stroud has looked good, I will say. I mean, there are obviously a lot of garbage time games because they're just getting the doors, you know, the brake speed off of them. Um, but, yeah, 0-6 for Ohio State QBs with Burrow, Fields, and Stroud. So, not the ideal start. But, uh, yeah, Lou, what, uh, what are you seeing so far out of uh, the QBs in the NFL? Um, I mean, I, I'm right about everything as always is kind of like my, my takeaway. No, I'm kidding. Um, Josh Allen. I mean, we can have a conversation about Josh Allen. I think I, I don't understand how anyone could talk about Josh Allen and not be like, we know exactly what's going to happen. Herbert, the guy throws a lot of passing yards, but he's not really doing a lot and they're going to find a way to lose games. I don't know if you want to blame the coach. You could do whatever you want. Trevor Lawrence, kind of a letdown game against the Chiefs. Everyone expected that to be a high-scoring game. I don't know. I think there's just, unlike Lamar, they're still trying to get their passing game going. They lost all their running backs. Burrow probably should take a couple weeks off, but I don't think he's going to. Yeah. 
Um, should have just started on the bench. Should should have just started first two or three weeks on there and rested. Pro- probably right. Like that would make the most sense. And then because they're yeah. talking about like he might have re-injured it, and they do not look good. They look bad. They need a lot of help. They need to get warmed up. Not help. That's not the right word. They need they need some time together and chemistry to like get going again. But but, but correct me if I'm wrong, Lou. That is the best set of weapons in the NFL. How about this take though? The Bengals have significantly overperformed like what they should have over the last mm. two years. Mm-mm. No Mm-mm. way. Mm-mm. No way. Bro, they have Jamar Chase, T. Higgins. Anthony Higgins. And I, get I get it. I get it. That is the best. It. That is the best. How many how many trio. hits has Burrow taken over that period of time? A lot a of guys take a lot of hits. That's a different argument though. When you have Jamar Chase and T. Higgins and Joe Mixon, like you can get stuff done. They lost. They were zero two last year, so let's not forget that we. I agree. About. I know. Remember, I made the wager week one because they're, they're a slow starting squad. For sure. Speaking, but slow starting and Joe Burrow banged up and losing two divisional games, I not necessarily it. where you want to be. I think I might have said Burrow might be like Flacco and Jace last year. I mean, that would be a crazy thing that did, is not off the table. Did you see the photo that said Joe Burrow after he gets paid and it's Andy Dalton? Yeah. That was it. By the way, Andy Dalton making an appearance on Monday. What the heck? Um, we're not cursing this week. What the heck are the Panthers doing? Why would you have Bryce Young and then just take him off the field to hand the ball to Miles Sanders with Andy Dalton? What are we doing? Did I? Yeah, I wasn't watching that. I was watching the Browns. They uh, did it like, well, that's why you don't like having two games on, right? But they, <laughs> that's, I got you on that one. That was tough. <laughs> But I, I, what are they doing? It's I, I'm fourth sure and one early in the game. And like, I think it was mid second quarter, maybe shortly after the second half, after halftime. Fourth and one. Also, Andy Dalton's under center. I think I texted. I'm like, are they, did they just bench it young? Like, I thought he was hurt. That's what I was like. This, what's we, what's going on? If nothing else, don't you want to develop your young draft pick to understand what to do on fourth and one? Instead of bringing Andy Dalton, I get it. Were they playing the Saints? Yes. He got they they got all in their head because Tyson Hill keeps coming in and out, and everyone tries to be like so a little like, bit smarter than what they are. Yeah, like let's, let's do our, our move. Hill. Andy Dalton, crazy. Yikes, That's crazy. Um, yeah, how I mean, about anyone want to talk about um, Russell Wilson? <laughs> Yeah, he's pretty ass. Have you been watching? <laughs> Do those Super Bowls happen more because of that defense? He and was a hot commodity at one point. Hot commodity. <laughs> Huge sales. Massive sales. I mean, he was, stinks. Was highly regarded as a top 10 QB. He's going to go down as a meme. The whole thing. I mean, ever since they didn't hand the ball off and he threw that interception, it's never been the same. Tough. Yeah. I mean... Okay, well, who 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 do you think has looked good so far? Ooh, who do I think at quarterback? Who I, who do I think has been? I, I gotta say, I think the Dolphins pose a lot of teams a lot of problems. The Dolphins I, are a problem. I think they're a problem, they're and so I, I gotta say, I, I've liked what I've seen out of Tua as a yeah. Tua learned his jujitsu moves. Tua and he's hater, like rocking. Yeah. yeah. Um. The Eagles, I've I've seen both those games because yeah. I've hurts in in uh, fantasy, yeah. two and zero, but slow starting. Like yeah. they haven't, I don't think performed this the way they lost their OC. Right, one. he bounced. Yeah, they're it. changing their offense around. They're going to get warmed up. You could tell that Jalen doesn't totally t- trust the offense yet. Like that's mm-hmm. pretty clear watching them. And they're doing these like weird runs in weird spots, and they're not taking it. Like they have Devonta Smith and AJ Brown. Like let's yeah. get the ball to AJ Brown. Mm-hmm. Um, I got two. Yeah, wait, let me do one quick one. Jared Goff. Mm. That dude has been really good. They've been – the Lions lost at home, though. I know. They, they had a tough loss, but, like, they, they're going to be just fine. Their offense is really good, I think. They were um, getting seven at home against the Niners, right? They were getting seven? No, they played the Seahawks. Yeah, they played the Seahawks. The Rams? No, it's Jared Goff doesn't Sorry, play. Lions, Lions, Lions. I was thinking That's about – Tyler Brand. Tyler Brand. Yeah, my bad, my bad. My <laughs> that was a Tyler Brand right there. I yeah, love that. That was on me. I've been there. Yeah, um, no, I don't think yeah. golf – they shouldn't have lost that game. No, yeah, it's tough. They're a good team, game. dude. Like, so they, I can't give golf that. Like, I can't give him playing well. Two I'm guys – I think he's playing pretty Jared Goff looks – I'm in fantasy one league. He's good. He he puts up numbers. That's the same – he's in the same conversation as Kirk Cousins. Same conversation. Let me say this. Let me say this. 
that was the first game that the Lions were supposed to win to be an actual like, okay, you're no longer the Lions, and they lost it. I mean, there's there's talent in that. Can I can I put that out? Like, if you're a Lions fan, you think you might win four games this year. They lost 37-31 in OT. No, and they Lions fans ball. were expecting to win the division. That team is good. I'm there's saying. talent Lions on that team. Lions are going to lion. No, yeah. I don't think so. 37-31, uh, uh, they didn't get the ball in OT. The, the like. Vikings are going to Vikings. That's the argument. It's Kirk Cousins is not that bad. Again, I, I love smoking him on this podcast. You guys know that. But, like, that defense is just atrocious. I he might break game. the passing yard record this year, like, like legitimately. Th- their defense just stinks. Anyways, two QBs that I think have looked all right so far. Uh, Brock Purdy and Jordan Love. What about Anthony Richardson? Yeah, until he got beat up. I mean, some nice runs. But, like, Jordan Love has some decent numbers through three touchdowns in the loss in Atlanta. Brock Purdy and the Niners are good. He's not trying to do too much. The Niners have so many weapons. Uh, I would be amazed if the Niners don't win the Super Bowl. That team is just so, so good. They're deep. Uh, It was a good game against the Rams, for sure. They gave up a lot of points, a lot more than I anticipated. Uh, But I would say Brock Purdy and and Love, for some, especially some younger QBs. Again, Kirk Cousins looks good. I think the Eagles are good. I like Hurts. Like, He's there. Obviously, two in the Dolphins are two and zero. Oh. Like, there's some speed and some real talent there. Um, yeah, it's the guy that would have been the guy for the Jets, but he's currently on a two and zero oh football team. Uh, Baker Mayfield, I got to give a little love to for sure. The idea for that we're, sure. we refuse to give Jared Goff love, we're going to give Baker Mayfield love is crazy. But Baker Mayfield is leading that team. They're two and zero. Oh. There's some clips going around of him being a leader. Like it doesn't look. We bad. know that about Baker, but the second it goes bad, you know what he's going to do. Just saying, through two yeah. weeks. But All then right. the other one that I wanted to call out was the Ohio State receiver that played on Monday night last night. That has had a lot of health issues, but in it, when he's a hundred percent, is one of the baddest dudes out. Mike, big Mike, can't guard Mike. He's a problem when he's playing. It's crazy. I, I forgot about how good he was. Like, he just boxes people out, and he's like, I'm catching this ball. I think he had 11 targets in the first half. Crazy. <laughs> yeah. This Like, if Derek Carr could just be a game manager, the Saints aren't that, that bad. Chris Olave, Mike Thomas, that Shahid kid is really good. They're going to get Kamara back in a few weeks. Like, they're not awful, and that division isn't very good. Like, I guess the Falcons are 2-0, the Bucs are 2-0, so I guess I can't say that this year. I would have anticipated it not being very good. But if the Buccaneers and the Falcons are 2-0, like you got to say they're good. Um, yeah, it's it's interesting. I I could end up being a sneaky division if the Bucs and Falcons end up staying good because I, th- I do think the Saints ha- have potential. They'll beat each other up eventually. But Any juice on Ritter cards? Because he's definitely flown under the radar in this conversation. People just I mean, don't like him. But I mean, guys live really I mean, pass rating. He, so listen, listen. We, l- let's have a conversation about you know we're talking about who's doing well, who's doing not, or, or who's not doing well. Like we're obviously talking about QBs. I can't. We we can't sit here and say uh, this is not to argue right or wrong, but we can't sit here and say nobody wants Desmond Ritter cards. Have you seen when people are paying for Puka Nakua? I mean, it's twenty five until yards. week five when co- when Cooper comes back and even, takes even all if the he's targets. amazing. His he's got cards selling for like. Hundreds of dollars. You can buy Jerry Rice autos cheaper than that. And Jerry Rice is the best receiver ever. Like you buy Randy Moss, he's the second best receiver ever. Like, what I are we doing? Like, yeah, like what's the what's the play? What there a isn't a play. And this is where it's always like I, I always love the the take on Instagram that like anytime we talk about anything, anytime anybody talk like anytime anybody with an audience talks about something, it's always well, they're they're pumping this. They're pumping. They're pumping this. You know what nobody's talking about right now? Puka Nakua. And people are buying Puka Nakua for hundreds of dollars. Nobody said a word about Puka Nakua. And he sold for hundreds of dollars. Maybe people just like to buy things in the heat of the moment. Maybe that's what it is sometimes. Like, he sold for astronomical amounts of money, and I can't sit here and be like, this doesn't make any sense. <laughs> this is crazy. We had two autos. I'm like, dude, get rid of these. Like, these are not going to sustain. A hundred. Sold one when, for $75 and one for $55. I'm like, see ya, bye. When Puka Pass. goes down in week five, you know what I'm going to say? Genie can't tear an ACL. All right. <sighs> well, I mean, let's not get, let's he, not get into he that. He can then go we'll back in the girl. bottle. He can go back in the bottle, but he can't tear an ACL. Yeah, he might not be. I he, mean, Puka yeah. Nakua is good. Like, he might be a star. He might be really good. He might be. He could be. Let's not let's not get carried away and say, uh, I'm not arguing that he will be. That's not the argument. Yeah. But, like, if Puka Nakua is a, has an all-pro year, great. That's amazing. Jerry Rice Autos, 
sell for less than Puka Nakua. Like, I, I don't know why we're having this conversation every year. It's like, it's wild. Yeah, we that you kind of almost have to throw that out. I think I'm almost like over that conversation because people always use that as a way to like talk down on people making purchases in real time. And that's just kind of stupid. Like, I don't think anyone who, well, that's not true. I'm sure there's if people who are buying Puka Nakua cards are also seeing the Jerry Rice card sell and they still want the Puka Nakua. So it's like, don't be a hater, all that stuff. Sure. But I will say one thing about Puka Nakua. If you are watching the Rams, he's clearly just playing the Cooper Cup role. And the second 100%. Cooper Cup comes back, he falls back into like, you know, six to eight targets a game at the most. So, and they're the Rams. So, you know, kind of got to be mindful of that one. What about Brian Robinson Jr., bro? This guy got shot last year and he's a beast. Many yeah. men. He's a he's beast. Good. What about Bijan? Bijan's so Dude, good. Bijan's like unreal. So when you good. watch the Falcons, it's like he he makes a cut and he's just. That did you see that? Did you I see watched that run? one like seven times. That run, I watched it back seven insane. times. Pop, pop, and do like a little jump ski doop and like keep going. I just think it's so crazy how how good he is. Like, <laughs> like uh, when I watch the Falcons, it's like amazing. Yeah, yeah, he's so good. They yeah. have a chance to be really. The Falcons have a chance to be sneaky if Des can keep the games clean, like. It can yep. get pretty interesting for the Falcons. Speaking of pretty interesting, Victor is Turris. I believe how this is pronounced. I'm not sure, heard of uh, but I saw it over this weekend. I think Shay, did you send it to us in chat? There was a uh, two tops Chrome super fractors or Bowman Chrome super fractors. Excuse me. Two Bowman Chrome supers pulled of the same guy on the same day from separate breakers. Yes. That's crazy. Um, Makes you wonder how that happens. My take, uh, and how do you solve it? You don't. You don't. You admit the error, and you keep moving. Correct. Printing error, production error. It happens. They make multiples of all these cards because there's yeah, issues sure, sure. and whatever. Like that stuff happens. I mean, if anyone doesn't know that, like they are making probably five one of ones, if I had to guess, right? And then they're picking the best one that comes off the line. And they're putting that in the product. Is that right? That I have no idea. I, of course, I, we don't know the exact. I know, but like, I know duplicates are definitely made for production errors, damage, things like that, for right. sure. They definitely have them. They make other ones and they sign them um, on autographs or non-autographs. Like, obviously don't. Um, but I don't know how many. Yeah, I'm do. saying five. But they make multiples of them. They pull them off the line. They pick the best one. They put that in the product. Obviously, something happened here where they ended up with two in the product. Uh, more than two. But Bowman Chrome also, uh, there was an announcement I saw this week that they're going to have boxes that have an auto is every card. Did you see this 60 autos in a box? So is this like a bit like, what are they? What's the plan? Is it going to be just one box? It's going to be random. They're going to charge you way more for that. I think they just put a bunch of bad autos in that box and then then they sell it. Like it's definitely an interesting concept. It, I like the, I like the idea, like the, let's try something new, right? Could you imagine ripping a box of cards, expecting one auto or two autos and you get 60. Like that, like that, that's neat. Jay, Courtney, can you send me the link to this so I could see what the deal is? It does like, smell like fall, tie. Smells like fall. It's crazy. I just <laughs> opened my window. I got candles arriving today. It's like about to be a whole different situation. Either way, I think it's a uh, cool idea. Another interesting topic, Ty, I know you're going to have some thoughts on this. Did you see the Polisic? Uh, I think it's from like impeccable soccer. There's a preview that came out. It's Christian Pulisic, immortal ink as the card. They're numbered to 59. You can see a bunch of signed ones in the background, but there's a picture of him holding it. The card is 23 of 59. And he wrote on there, the LeBron James of soccer, 23 of 59. I've got to imagine that card will do some numbers. That card will definitely draw interest. That's captain America. That is the face of the U S soccer team. World Cup coming in 2026. I know Ty is very bullish on soccer in general. He is the star in the U.S. That was a funny moment. That's likely going to get some attention. I would imagine that card does more than yeah. it's worth. Yeah. There's a question um, for when we get to Q&A, but I'll, I'll just kind of address it. Now, someone asked, like, if I was just starting my collection, what have you, uh, blah, 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 what would you collect for, like, some good, like, ROI? And there's so many factors to that. My first initial answer is it has to be something you're passionate and interested in. Now, you might be passionate and interested in making money. Then I would just live on eBay all day 
just search sold listings, find some insights and go down that path. The second thing I would do is start collecting men's national team soccer players because between uh, there's the club, I, is it the club, there's the gold cup that's going to be here. There's a, a lot of international tournaments happening in North America leading up to the world cup. That's going to be here. Obviously Messi has lit us a flame on the, the, the global game here in the States. Um, yep. But yeah, I just think any of the starting players, if you can really dive deep on what's going on with the men's national team, I think there's upside there for the eventual moment of absolute hype hype. Can I do two I, soccer things real fast? Yes, of course. Um, well, you finish, Brad, because yours sounds like it was related to this. Mine's a little different. Uh, kind of. I, I find it fascinating how much it's been a thing in the hobby forever, but it's probably not gotten a ton of buzz. But this year, looking back on it, we've had some like inscriptions have become a big part of the hobby very quickly. Like the Victor Weminyama is obviously one of the biggest ones, right? When he's at first card ever signed, Tops was doing that thing that uh, come down to Dallas and or come down to San Antonio and, you know, do something. We haven't really heard much about it, but he was having before that. Yeah, but it was, yeah, sure. That was just obviously a really, really big moment. This politic thing. Um, obviously, inscriptions have been a part of the hobby forever. Like they're really, really cool, and they add unique value to a card. Moment in time, a specific stat. Like there's LeBron ones about like I think favorite actress. I think he's got one that says Halle Berry. There's some very, very cool. <laughs> That's cool. I didn't yeah, there's like favorite actresses. I think it says Halle Berry. Um, so that. there's obviously cool stuff like that. But um, playing on moments and having athletes contribute to that. Uh, you know, I. I remembered going to the Super Bowl uh, with with doing a little promo with whatnot back when Burrow is Burrow Rams, and I got to have we did a little show with like T Law, Debo Samuel, Gabe Davis, a few others, and I told you know I talked with Gabe Davis about it because I had some cards there. We were gonna have him sign them. We gave him away on whatnot, and it was like I was like, "Will you sign this for me?" Right, Bills Mafia, and I said we we signed two of them, and I said sign this one, one of two, and sign the other one two of two PSA was there. They put their little sticker on it and we gave him one in chat. And I asked Gabe Davis, I said, have you ever signed Bill's mafia in a card? He said, never. He said, I've signed it on a helmet here or there, but I've never signed it. And I was like, this card has automatic value. Automatic. Think, of, think of what Bill's mafia is and what it means. Like, I know what the jets mean to you. I know what Ohio state means to me. Like mm -hmm. to have that on a card, there's gotta be a Bill's fan out there that would pay crazy amount of money for a Gabe Davis where most of his stuff sells for 10, 15, 20, $30, non-rookie stuff mm -hmm. to put it on a rookie card with a Bill's mafia inscription, hand numbered one of two that he's never signed anywhere else. and might not ever sign yeah. that ability to have an inscription that is so unique like that. Like it's sweet. imagine if you tie, imagine if there's a flawless one of one patch auto inscribed we are of micah parsons i love it i mean lou i know you had two soccer thoughts hold I, those because i have some good. tangent here like um i it's definitely a bit of a factor of the athletes being part of the media more and and the conversation more and i think taking the narrative and also certain athletes being legitimate collectors and understanding yeah. it from both sides rather than just now a lot of 99% agent tells them they did a deal, standard NFLPA deal with the licensing company. Boom. They sign stickers. They don't even have cards in front of them. And that's how it goes. Right. But a lot of guys, you know, if you have collected and it's happening more and more and more and more, and it brings up two things that I thought about. And one we talked about before just on that combo. But first is Andy K, president of eFriends, one of my best friends, has been collecting Game of Thrones cards. And in pop culture, Love. there's a lot more. I think inscriptions from moments and he gifted me a Lord Varys keep on paddling. Cause I love Lord Varys, the spider. He's got, you know, every ears everywhere knows what's going on. I'm a little Lord Varys to me. So I'm not a eunuch, um, but that, and then the second thing was Michael Parsons, who is a collector himself, tried to fleece our boy sauce Gardner out of the game war in post game. Yeah, that was crazy. And I, it's kind of the same thing. And Dan like, Penn stayed alone. didn't even know he was getting coached. Deep, sorry. And was, that was tough. So the story on that is Micah, yeah. after the game, goes up to sauce with a jersey and a Sharpie in his hand. As he's wearing his game worn, he has a fresh Parsons 11 team fresh edition. Fresh from the team shop, bro. And he goes, yo, 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 can I get your jersey? Do a jersey swap? 
I brought one out specifically for you. <laughs> Hands him the the edition, not game worn, not player worn. Signs the and hands it to him, and then takes his game worn. But do we know it wasn't game worn from like another game? Based on the verbiage, it didn't sound even remotely close to being game worn. <laughs> it looked like the equipment manager handed him a fresh one from the locker room. Um, but that that was my on uh, inscriptions. I think players understanding and consuming the media a bit more and under, and the narrative around collecting and the worth of everything that players are wearing from basketball shoes to socks to cleats to shin pads, blah, 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 all have value. You know, all these companies are uh, getting involved, game worn jerseys, what have you. So there's more awareness. And then the pop culture uh, inscriptions. Lou, you had some thoughts on soccer. Yeah, I also just think on the auto thing, I think it went viral a couple times of people doing inscriptions. And now the companies, I think, rightfully so, are probably like not telling guys to do it, but kind of like suggesting it as an option. And I think guys think it's funny, so they'll do it. You know, like every time you hear about someone doing an inscription, they're usually like giggling about it because it's funny. So that's cool. I think that's great. Yeah. Um, two quick soccer things. Number one, is Messi just like not playing in games on turf? No, he's he's not not playing in games on turf. But didn't he just not play a really big game for them because it was on turf and he said it was, it, it was on turf? He didn't say it was because it was on turf. Okay. They, I might have it, missed they, they kind of like pulled that up. It's because they're just managing. He's just been playing a shitload of games. Got it. Okay. He was in Argentina and then he's got to go back to Argentina. They're just trying to manage his health. I, I see it. I he see did it. come out and answer the turf question. Unless I missed something in the last 36 hours, he answered the turf question. He said, I grew up playing on turf my whole life. I have no qualms. I will not not play because of turf. Valid. Um, and then the other thing is the World Cup final is not guaranteed to be at MetLife. I there's there's chatter around SoFi. Dallas is it's down to Dallas or New York. That's where it's gotten to. That's what I read yesterday. But I also read that Messi doesn't play on turf, so maybe that's not true. Well, the reality is New York would be amazing. It's just let's be real about the state of that that stadium. Yeah, it's Dallas or New York 20, 26 final host. That's dope. It should be MetLife. But I, I and I haven't been to the, the Cowboys Stadium. But Cowboys Stadium is, stadium is going to fit a lot more people, though. That's why they would do it. And it's far more technologically advanced. I mean, uh, that tin barn of MetLife was about <laughs> some of the worst money spent ever. That thing is One of the terrible. worst stadiums. It's so bad. It has zero character. I hate is, stadiums with no character, man. It drives me crazy. Give me something. Yeah. Green Bay was so sick last year. We have green lights. Sick. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking, that, well, spe I'll be in Dallas or New York, I guess. Speaking of Dallas, mm. B and C cards asked on this week's question, is Micah Parsons the best defensive player in the league? 100%. TJ uh, Watt had uh, something to say about it last night, for sure. Mm. TJ Watt had a hell of a game. But uh, think about the impact that TJ Watt had on that game versus the impact that Parsons had. And, and 100%. Like, I, watched both, great, I, watched both play. I watched both games. Parsons is the best player in the league. The best it's defensive not player even... In my opinion, I was going to use the word impactful. Yep. I was going to use the word impactful. Game record is the word they always use. Yeah. Every he's single so play, if he's on the field, the offense has to. The idea that he's plus 195 for defensive player of the year is like how, Hammer. I guess you're saying he might get hurt. Other than that, how does he not win the award? Any juice on the collecting side around him, right? Yeah. I mean, there's definitely juice. I mean, his stuff obviously sells like, but it's a defensive player. Like, I mean, he's the best defensive player in the league, in my opinion. Went to a relatively big school, Penn State, right? Like, I'm not going to deny that. And plays for probably one of, if not the most popular franchise in the NFL. Like, those things all matter. And when we sold a Leaf Auto last night, rookie had a, like, 20 for, like, 50 bucks. Like, seems affordable. I mean, Puka Nakua sells for, like, three times yeah, that. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's it's interesting. Like, his, his good stuff definitely has some juice on it, but um, – Again, I just I don't you know I don't think the defensive side of the the card game is is yeah. There's a couple guys for sure. Like Sauce is obviously one of them. No no question. Both you know Nick Bosa sells pretty well. Uh, um, Parsons obviously is up there. T.J. Watt sells incredibly well. There's definitely some some juice, but I'm not sure it's it's going to compete with some of the big offensive guys. They got to bring him in on some gadget plays on offense or let him return some punts. <laughs> return punts. Stop. They never, but he he could be a running back in the league. Lou, uh, 
this is a first. We're getting trade requests in here. Echelbird220 wants to know if Lou will trade Mark Andrews in the play of the week fantasy league. Absolutely. There are, everyone's available. It's a, um, we're trying fire to sale? No, no, it's not a fire sale. We're just trying to shake up the locker room. We got to have some, some changes got to get made in the locker room because it's not going well right now for me. Mm. Another good one about fantasy. And oh, I can't wait to talk about this. Does Ryan regret uh, dropping Sky more yet? Absolutely wow. not. Absolutely not. No, yeah, I agree with that. No, no is the answer. My guy had three for like 70 and a tutty. Sick. Great. I'll play him again and he'll get zero points. Buy, sell, hold. Burrow, Tua, Hurts. Say it sell again. More. Buy, sell, hold. Burrow, Tua, Hurts. Um, selling Burrow. Uh, mm. Yeah, I'm buying Tua and I'm holding Hertz. I would probably sell Tua. Yeah. I would buy Jalen and I would hold Burrow. I'm aligned. I would agree with Lou. Because Tua's selling... probably at like the most excited he's been at in a while. Hertz is just that going guy. the wrong way. Burrow's yeah. going the wrong way for sure. Exactly. But you believe I I, I... Yeah, I mean, you're probably buying Jalen just because his price is special compared to Burroughs. It's a lot more affordable. Um, so, yeah. At what point do we need a Bengals worry meter? 0-4. Who's that question from? Uh, eighth Wonder Cards, Jacob. Shout out Eighth Wonder Cards. Yeah, I would say they've earned the they they've earned the right to. We they've earned the right to have our patience. I would say. I don't know, man. We gave the Chiefs me. We've done the Chiefs meter a couple seasons. They go. Yeah, that was like half joking. I thought <laughs> they go zero and three, zero and four. I think the, the there's a little bit more of a conversation. I would say it's more about Burrow. If Burrow's going to miss three or four weeks, then we have issues. If he's just going to sit down a week and they're going to lose two games, then he'll be back and then they can keep going. I'm not that worried. They just got to get in at nine and seven, at you know ten and seven or whatever. <laughs> uh, in terms of QBs. Who is overpriced and who is underpriced? Okay. Herbert. I, yeah, I would say Herbert's probably massively overpriced, if I had to guess. And Josh Allen. You'll never change your mind on those as long as we're doing it. No, that's not talk. true. I would 100% change my mind on Herbert. I go back. And I'm so hot and cold on Herbert. It's crazy. If you ask my buddy Sean, who I do all my fantasy leagues with, every year and pretty much every week I talk about trading for Justin Herbert or whatever. He just... I just can't get there, man. I just feel like it's going to be what it's going to, you know, it's Philip Rivers reincarnated. Until I see all the results, what am I supposed to, what else am I supposed to think? I would say this, this, you know, obviously stings a little bit. I don't have anything major, but I, I got to say overpriced has got to be fields. There was a lot of, there was a lot of buzz about Chicago, about the bears. They finally got him a weapon. They got DJ Moore, but that team stinks. He has not looked amazing. Uh, made some pretty, you know, pretty poor mistakes. They, they, they're terrible. I think they're a bottom five team in the NFL. Um, there was a lot of buzz going uh, uh, around fields cards to start the year. Uh, he was probably one of the top three or four guys at the national. Like I think you said he would be the hottest guy at the national. That was a quote. Yeah, definitely said. was for yeah. sure. It was, it was in that conversation, but um, again, just so much unproven and they're not good. They're not a good football team. They're not going to win a lot of games. Uh, and if fields does not look amazing this year, the bears might look to move on from Justin Fields next year with a deep draft class of QBs top five pick. They might look to move on. Whether that's the right or wrong decision, I'm not here to argue that. But um, mm -hmm. they they may look to give up early on on the Fields experiment. And I would say right now his stuff is pretty high for uh, you know the on the field results. I completely agree. I think teams are definitely. It was always talked about as a quick a quick hook, but I think it's quicker than ever in terms of how fast teams will move on from guys. There was talk about that moving on from Fields this year, like this past off season. So. If they don't make the playoffs, I would say probably he's out. Well, good thing they're gearing up to go on the road at the Kansas City this week. Um. <laughs> yeah, a couple of easy games are coming up. I think it's Chiefs 49ers, I believe. <laughs> Dude, they're going to be on four. And... Oh, they, man. No, they catch a breather after the Chiefs. They, they do. Uh, against the Broncos at home. Uh, 
<laughs> the Bears are one mean? of the worst five teams in the league. Like they're the everybody's easy win. That's what I'm saying. The Broncos are gonna be like, finally, we go to get their first win of the year. Right. Yo, low key, they might be 0 eight. Keep going. Who's who's underpriced? Who do you think is like cheap compared to others compared to their performance? No bull. Sorry, sorry, Jay. People will say whatever. The Falcons might be good. I was so going to say Ritter's answer or Bijan. Des. Yeah, the the how Ritter thing has definitely got some legs on it. Both of those teams are two and zero. Oh. Both of those QBs have looked all right so far. Um, Washington, right. low key, big football town. Howell could be a guy that rallies the city. Uh, to me, the the easy answer. E- this is the easy way out is uh, J- J- uh, Jalen Hurts. His prices compared to Josh Allen, Justin Herbert. Make no sense. All of the other big time QBs that, you know, top five, Trevor Lawrence, who I love um, and still believe in, will believe in until the end of time. Um, his prices comparatively are just not quite there. And he's good. The Eagles are good. Uh, they're a top three NFL team. Um yeah, to me, it's, I'm not, I just, again, the AFC is so much harder. Like Josh Allen, Joe Burrow, Patrick Mahomes, Trevor Lawrence, Justin Herbert. Like, those guys aren't all going to the Super Bowl. The NFC is, so, I feel like it's so much easier to come out of. I, I think the Niners and the Eagles are the clear favorites here, and you might have a team that surprises us later. But uh, just the run through the AFC, just the odds are not in your favor. It's, if they're not going to the Super like if, if Josh Allen or Justin Herbert, let's just pick one of those two, just flip a coin and guess. If one of those two teams loses in the first round this year, because it's not impossible, the AFC is good. Like it's if likely. one of those if one of those two guys loses in the first round this year, it will be chaos. Chaos. If the Bills go out, if the Bills don't make the playoffs, it's going to be crazy for Josh Allen. So to me, it's to answer the question as easy as possible, it's it's Jalen Hurts. Jalen's a good pick. The guy I've by far been the most wrong on. Where's and it could at price wise it, these days. It, real quick, it could be Tua. I do not like Tua, and I'm not gonna believe in Tua. They are good. There's talent on that team. He had I mean put up 466 yards in week one. Um, so I understand that the cards are stacked against me at this point against Tua. I'm not a believer. I'm very open about that. Um, but there's talent on the team. They could be good. It could be Tua, depending on how you view the Dolphins and their potential success. It it could very easily be Tua. Oh, I had a coffee. Lamar, Lou, in terms of Lamar, I mean, hasn't looked amazing so far. They beat I, just, the Bengals. I don't agree. He was awesome on Sunday. Yeah, I mean, week one. Did you watch? I mean, he was pretty awesome. Yeah, I watched the Bengals game, and that's all we get these days is Bengals and Browns games. So yeah, right. I forgot about that. Uh, yeah, I mean, um, I, I get. Yeah, it. I mean, the Bengals defense. I also didn't think looked very good. He clearly struggled against the Texans defense. The Bengals defense couldn't stop a runny nose. They're 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 not good on defense. Fair enough. Um, so um, Ravens, uh, they have some talent. I I don't know why. If you're a Ravens fan, I would love some insight on this. Why is Nelson Aguilar in the game? I don't understand why Zay Jones is not the Zay Flowers is not the number one receiver in Baltimore. He I is. Mean, he is, o, he is. OBJ is. Dude, he's not OBJ the is irrelevant. Play. OBJ like, is Nelson Aguilar is catching every pass. And OBJ like, was a was a ticket. So no, I mean, he got uh, hurt. They signed I'm, him from the marketing department. Let's be real about that situation. Zay Flowers has thirty five percent of the targets in target Baltimore, but, but give me snap counts. I, I watched that game, up. and it's he like, Nelson Aguilar yeah. catch, Nelson Aguilar catch. I'm like, what are we doing? This dude is notoriously bad. Ask any Eagles fan about Nelson Aguilar. He stinks. Wait, Bobby, our seventh producer in command, you're a Ravens fan? <laughs> is that what's going on? Interesting. Yeah. Um, Bobby, don't been, let him get to the man. We've been talking a lot of football, but yes. I just want to slide in a little football. No one there's cares. This, there's this dude, Jeremy Doku, that is like Manchester City. They every other team, Manchester United, it's like pulling teeth to like bring in some random cat, and then he gets hurt in the first game. Manchester City signed this left winger, Jeremy Doku, who was unreal in short time for the Belgian national team. Came on and cooked fools. In his first game, so I just wanted to throw that out. Uh, I just wanted to throw that out there as a name to keep an eye out for. All right, real quick, couple yeah. other uh, since we got through that one. Uh, 
Oh, Zay Flowers played seventy seven percent of the snaps. Well, rip. Yeah. I, maybe maybe he's not getting the ball. I looked They're, on. Yeah, it, he's like, not getting the ball enough. They need to get. Why the is ball this guy ball. not getting the ball? He's so good. That's right. Um, he's trying to hold back the, the playbook. You can't get too much film early in the season. You're not wrong, Ty. Like, oh, yeah. great question, Colin Palma Seven. Who would you rather buy, Jalen Hyatt or Zay Flowers? Zay Ooh, Flowers. Zay Flowers by a lot. Zay Flowers. Um, That's a cool name. Great name. Great football name. So great. is Jalen Hyatt, by the way. That's a great football name too. Yeah, but Zay Flowers is kind of yeah. like give the man his Zay Flowers. You get the flower emojis. I'd be dropping yeah, those left same. and right. It's great. I'd be right. confused with Zay Jones. Um. Oh, here's That's a fun cool. one. I, I I read some of these this weekend. Uh, on it, athlete college football nil cards thoughts. They have a uh, OSU set CC two. Yeah, I actually ripped one. They were outside of the stadium on Saturday. I saw it in a Facebook group that they were That's there. Cool. So I went there and grabbed them. I have one downstairs. I would I wish I would have brought it up. Um, it's like a little pack. It's perforated. You just tear it open, very Lorcana style, um, and rip it open. And there's like a little pack inside. And it's got like oh, the checklist is apparently pretty big, but you can get autos. Marvin Harrison Jr. has autos in it. Kyle's in it. A lot of the guys are in it. I ripped one and hit like or two. Hit Cam Martinez auto, and the other pack had nothing. Um, the cool cards, the photos aren't amazing. It's not. This is not a Panini or Fanatics produced product. It's very not. It's definitely different. Um, I enjoyed it. They have an NIL one coming with Shredder Sanders in Colorado. I'm not sure if Shredder or Travis Hunter or any of those guys are in there, but I would hope maybe we'll see. Um, so they have other colleges as well. It was like 13 or $14. It wasn't very expensive. Um, I posted a video and this is just the hobby in a nutshell. Sometimes um, I posted a video ripping one on the field at Ohio State. Super cool moment for me. And I'm like, this is awesome. Like, check out these cards. And somebody's like, this is the biggest scam ever. This is the biggest waste of $13. This is so stupid. And I literally responded with, it was $13 to buy a pack of cards of a college I've collected for 30 years. It's just like the, the hobby, man. If it's not like, you know, uh, Michael Jordan 101 patch auto, it's just worth $0. So mm -hmm. I, I found that amusing. But yeah, I think they're cool. Again, I've talked about this. Watch, watch this. I gotta show you guys this. This you guys will love this. Check this out. Okay. Okay. Ty, what's what's like um what's the number one thing you're looking forward to this week? This Shout week? out to y'all for waiting. Yeah. Shout out to those. Wait, hang on, Ryan. Hang on, Ryan. Stop yeah. talking. Tyler, yeah. what's your number one thing you're looking forward to this week? Oh, wait. Oh, I I got a cool one. Uh is it this isn't a setup, right? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, Gary's doing a Gary's doing a Q and A with uh, Henrik Lundqvist tomorrow night. Ooh, that is a nice little in person thing. That was for a that Hanks. was a national connection, I believe. Correct? Fragrance, I believe it was. I believe yeah. it was um, for uh, Henrik's fragrance launch. Um, that'll be pretty cool. Henrik has a fragrance on and, and King seven. Hank. I mean, that is talk about a suave individual. Yeah, one My of the man, good. suave. Yeah. Um, oh, that's right. I got a little member guest on Thursday, so a little foggy. Um, so, yeah. Ty, real quick, I talked about this. These are cool to collect the players in college. This is a set of Ohio State cards from 2000 and I think 1, 2000. They were in partnership with Wendy's, right? Oh, we and, love these, Ty. And Wait, look who's yeah, on yeah, there. Yeah. Can you send me? Oh, wow. Right, like I, this was like ten dollars. It's a perforated set for those that aren't watching. It's got four Ohio State too. players on there, including my guy Donnie Nicky. Who else like, is on there? Anyone I would, I would remember? Scott Scott McMullen, 2000? Will Smith, rest in peace, Buckeye legend. Yep. What, was, legend. what year was Laurinaitis? Uh, it was drafted in two thousand and nine. Three time All American. So it'd have been oh six, oh seven, uh, oh eight, no, oh five, oh six, oh seven, oh eight. Yeah. Both really the national cool. championship team losses to LSU in Florida. Yeah. My would you mind? Days. Would you mind showing the Wendy's logo again? One of the great old school logos from the nineties. Yeah. yeah. Ryan, oh, that's, do you, that's not even like the cool one, but that's right there. Do you do fr um, fries with your frosties? I don't get frosties a lot. But like, where you stand on the fry frosty combo? Great, A plus, elite, yeah. elite Boom. combo. Oh, vanilla frosty fries mm, is chocolate, chocolate big, for sure. Big play. You also got to get extra salt on the fries if you're going to do the frosty because you get salt. Uh, yeah, salt them up. Yep. Can you send me a picture of that, um, right? Yeah, you want the front or the back? The back, one of each. Okay, that'd be great. Yeah. So again, just like stuff like that, like this guy went to the same high school I did, and I idolized him at nine years old. Ty, I know. Sorry, you weren't allowed to idolize folks. I did. I'm a, I apologize. Um, 
but you know what I mean? It's just, it's cool to collect stuff like that. Right. 20 years old. Like I remember ripping these apart as a kid, like trying to get them and to be able to get this, like $13, like some kid out there collects some, one of the guys on the team that went to his high school. It just, it's, it's such a cool thing. So uh, I, I, I enjoy it as a collector. I think it's fun. So big fan. Uh, anyways, let's, uh, let's wrap this up here. Got a couple more questions and we'll get into play of the week or, uh, I'm sorry, latest launch as we wrap it up. It's a big, uh, big release week. Got to talk about this while we're on the topic of college football. This is wild. Uh, Joe Mallory says, Ryan, are you, uh, what's Ryan's level of concern after a three peat for Michigan after McCarthy start? Um, I think it's worth noting that JJ McCarthy had, I think under 200 yards and three interceptions at home under the lights against Bowling Green. Um, very odd that we'd bring that up after, a three interception game against Bowling Green, but that's neither here nor, here nor there. So uh, we'll see. I'm looking forward to that. I've got that date circled. That's going to be a pretty big weekend, right? Y- you got Thanksgiving, Black Friday, college football rivalry weekend. And uh, I think that's the same weekend. Correct me if I'm wrong, Jay Court. I don't know if you guys can help me. Is that the same weekend as uh, F1 Vegas or is it the weekend before? What it's was weekend Vegas? before Vegas is, is it? one is weekend before. Gotcha. Like See, I thought they were the same sure. weekend. But shout out to Joe Mallory for the question. Either way, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if I'm like. Never mind for that. What Lou? I love it. No, Let's no, go. no, no, no. Wait, wait, wait. Let's do it. Come on. Plenty of time. Long season ahead. I, I don't know if I'd be like jumping for joy about the Ohio State Buckeyes based on what I've seen, but we'll wait and see. Long season ahead. Long season. You'll know by the end of the yeah, season. Yeah, me too, by the way. I wish I was more excited for F1 Vegas. Like, I watched a little bit of the race this weekend, this past weekend. Right, I saw you were talking about it too. That's what made me check in, honestly. Yeah, it was fun. It's been like, meh. Well, the problem is it's just Red Bull wins every race. So that's they why didn't was win last week. week. That's why it was exciting. Yeah. That's why it was yeah. exciting. Yeah. I you see, um, I, I think Lewis, I saw a bit, Lewis was asked uh, how he feels about like his chances to hit 300 podium or 200 podiums. I think he's at like maybe 196 and he turned and who else was on maybe it was two younger guys. And he was like, wow, 200 podiums. You guys haven't even raced 200 races. <laughs> <laughs> Dude's a legend. Yeah. All right. Let's, I figure we got to wrap up with this question. Cause we have not talked about it a lot. Now that one of our teams look amazing this year. Um, uh, Gowdy gum who wins this week, Pats jets. Who's each team's best current player to collect. Um, the it's Jets' in- best player to collect is Garrett Wilson. That's by a mile. To, it's not by I don't a mile. Know if it's by a mile. Brees Hall definitely not by is, a mile. Is shown some electricity to him. I think, right? I think you might have a high state brain. If you ask Jets fans, I think it's a lot closer among the really? three, the three big guys. Yeah. yeah. Brees Hall. One of, yeah. One of the things is, as a wide receiver, you need someone throwing you the ball. As a, as a running back, yeah. they just you don't. You. Yeah. Well, you need a line to protect you to allow you to run the ball. True. I mean, not in Breeze's case. You're great. You're great. Out. That first week, he had some big runs coming off that injury. And then He's our legend. biggest hole of the day, right? Michael Carter had the ball. Uh, the Patriots' best player to collect is Bill Belichick. <laughs> you think? Yeah, no question. I was talking with my dad about it yesterday. We were texting each other. You know, he said, another L, but this uniforms look awesome. And I couldn't agree more. I love the Patriots' throwback uniforms. Uh, they stink. Mac Jones well, is not Mac. the answer. We just have all these guys on the scene. This is the classic Bill Belichick stuff where it's like you just you get all these guys that were like once good or have shown flashes and you get it for like eight hundred thousand dollars a year league minimum type stuff. And like Ty Montgomery's returning kicks and mm-hmm, you got mm-hmm. Kayshawn Boyd and like Juju with half a knee running mm-hmm. routes for you. And like Hunter mm-hmm. Henry and Mike Gusecki like. What Zeke Elliott. Zeke yeah. is cool. Like I, I love Zeke. I have enough. You know, I have. a. He I, looks I, thin. He looks spry. Yeah. Well, right. Right. Uh, it, yeah, it's going to be, a, I think it'll be a long weekend for Mac, but Zach's, I'm not a believer in Zach Wilson. Um, uh, Do you have any thoughts on Bill Belichick um, doing the spike down of the red challenge fly? acting like a tough guy and then being wrong on the challenge. Is that a sign of uh, his decline? I mean, I think there's been a decline since Brady left for sure. Like I the, you know, the wholeheartedly report, agree. The, the report came out that he wants to stick it to Don Shula and take him out of the record books because of his, uh, you know, comments about the Patriots and, uh, you know, the 2007 going for the undefeated season. Um, so I would obviously love Belichick to be there in the, he's one of, regardless of what anyone says, he is 
he's one of the best couple coaches of all time. I mean, like he, That's he's a for legend sure. for sure. Three coach so, of all yeah. Time. Uh, uh, so when I say who do I collect or who would I collect on the Patriots? It's definitely them. Like, I don't think Mac is the answer. I've been open about that. Like they cut Billy Zappi, then signed him back. I'm not at this point in time. Would you rather own a Tom Brady auto or a Bill Belichick auto? Oh, Brady for sure. Aren't there far less Bill Belichick? Autos? Sure. Yeah, for sure. But Brady has one rookie auto in a Patriots uniform. One. He was pick 199. He wasn't, you know, look how many okay, cards. Would you in- rather have a year two Tom Brady auto or a Bill Belichick auto? Year two Brady. Wow. I have three or four Belichick autos. Um, they're definitely rare. They don't pop up often. I don't see them a lot. Um, but yeah, Brady, like they don't remember the coach as much. Like people don't remember Phil Jackson quite like they remember Michael Jordan. Like it doesn't quite work the same way. Like a great comp by you. Wow. That was, I was, that just completely put a hole in my entire argument. That was crazy. I mean, Phil Jackson has rings with Kobe and Jordan and nobody wants Phil Jackson compared to, you know, Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant. A little Bryant. Bit of weirdo how it came out, but anyway. Yeah. I mean, but he's a legend. Yeah. Great, he's, great book. So, eleven. Uh, who's winning? Patriots. <laughs> oh God! I got the Jets winning. Uh, I got the it's Jets over. Winning. I got the Jets winning that game. Twenty-one seventeen Jets. Oh, I would say like thirty-five six Patriots. <laughs> no way. Mac Jones is not scoring thirty-five points on that defense. Didn't he just no score chance. thirty points like two seconds? Our defense is not as good as you think it is. Really? I hope that's the case. I want to slightly play. injured. Hey, it's Literally Tuesday. Uh, again, I would, honestly, the problem with this show is I'm in pain Sunday to Tuesday, and then Wednesday I'm completely back every time. It's 11 uh, 11. Make a wish. The Jets will win. I wish for a victory. Shout out to everybody for the questions. Good uh, good group of questions this week, and we didn't even get to all of them. Yeah, I do want to talk about latest launch because this is an interesting topic. Ty, real quick, what's up? We've This is arguably one of the longer shows. We yeah. haven't touched on Colorado football program what would you like to talk about they are getting 21 this weekend for all that has been said and done in the first three weeks obviously they lost their their best skill player that non-quarterback skill player um i'll take the 21 but i just uh, i'm intrigued at how dion how they're going to play this week in the media i does why because they might lose by 35. Yeah. And they, they've they been running, you know, they've been talking a lot for, for that. They might not. Definitely they, good at getting attention. Not. I'm hoping we don't get the Travis Hunter was out excuse. Um, uh, but if we sit here in two weeks and say Colorado's, what are they at now? Three now? Yep. Be, Colorado's three, three and two. two, and they got 50 hung up on them twice in back-to-back weeks. I don't think any of us would be surprised. They have guys on that team. They're talented. But to beat Oregon in Oregon and then beat USC at home, I I, I will. You guys. Where's Lou at? Where's Lou I Listen, I know I just want to put the combo out there. I can't believe you guys are doing this. Shadur Sanders versus Bo Nix. What about it? Shadur is significantly better than Oh, Bo he's Nicks. amazing. He's, he's oh, really good. I get he's, it. He's but how great. about the line in front of Bo versus the line in front of Shador versus yeah, I mean, the defensive lines? We'll see. I'm not like that locked in on Oregon, but I would, I'm would. i happily taking the 21. Interesting. I like it. What I about USD? It. What about USD? I, 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 there's strong I've had a, I've had a, too. I, exactly. I, I, the only part that's weird is I think – they said they're playing the USC game at like 11 a.m. local time, which mm-hmm. I think plays in Colorado's favor. Mm-hmm. I agree with that. So that is a sneaky little thing. I think I had them at plus 720 money line or something like that for the USC game. I snagged a couple of weeks ago. I, don't I know. guess I it's think... just a very intriguing spot. Not yeah. often do you see a team yes. in sports that is that hyped, that is yes. that admired right now, that is that must-watch TV. I mean – the Saturday night game was the highest, most watched game so far. Like early 9. season, five million dollars. Early season, dollars people watching. It was the fifth highest rated college football game on ESPN ever. And they were twenty three and a half point favorites. It went to double overtime, and now they're getting twenty one. And I'm, I'm just interested. I hope they win. I definitely hope they. Yeah, cover. I was. Oh uh, my gosh! Could you imagine before, if they make the I'll CFP? Probably bet them. Could you but imagine just, if they play this? It'll C- be it, yeah. It'll imagine. be an interesting media. Uh, 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 navigation for Dion 
if the game if it, if it lands on the line if they yeah, there's there's no question i'm rooting for them to win i would love to see Shader sanders travis hunter colorado make the cfp i think it would be electric for college football and it would do crazy numbers give me ohio state and colorado in in the rose bowl i'm in i'll be there sign me up for that we'll see i don't know anyways latest launch only thing that matters this week there's a lot of stuff coming out a lot of stuff flawless football 2022 flawless football comes out as the 2023 season is starting biggest product of the year but panini has said it before they want to get back on track a lot of things left to happen but i hope that continues to get better and better because we're starting the next year purdy is still a chase thankfully he's a he's a big chase i know ty's ty's guy kenny pickett is in there as well garrett wilson um but biggest release of the 2022 season comes out this week flawless football i'm sure we'll see some big big hits and we'll talk about it next week on the episode so stay tuned for that you guys got any closing thoughts um hope everyone's enjoying the fall i think uh i'm feeling i'm feeling good i feel like we are we are firing a little bit Hot. i agree we are firing yeah I'm just uh, happy. A major a shout out fall. to court major shout out to jay people that help with so much behind and Bobby. <laughs> I was gonna get to Bobby. Seems like an unnecessary Bobby. shot at Bobby. It wasn't oh, a shot. I mean, guys been in the league for two weeks. <laughs> that's and a fair. That's, that's a fair. Some work for you. Get some flowers. Court yeah. up at five o'clock for these freaking episodes. Listen, that's I'm I'm as team court as it gets. All the you know Jay wants to tell us he's team court and then throw it under the bus for production errors. I mean, my goodness. yeah. Listen, I mean, last week if you saw the show, there was some mixed up names and a certain somebody really passed the blame around. But that's neither here nor there. That's what I'm saying. Meanwhile, Bobby can't even get his claps in correct and wants flowers. <laughs> so, like, you know, I'm a big fan of the guy. He's helping us with collab posts on the main page. But. <laughs> Team Bobby, for sure. I got to go to work, guys. Come on. All right. Shout out to y'all. See you guys next week. I love you guys. Love you. We are. White out. Let's go.